Hey, everybody. My name is Todd Ronan, and happy Memorial Day weekend. I'm joined with Liz Cross and a girl from a Lakota tribe in the 1850s, and I thought we could get some more information about her, her story, her life, her journey. Liz, how are you this morning? Great. Thank you. And isn't she so beautiful? I've always been fascinated with the culture, and I used to go to a lot of different Native American uh, events around town, and I'm just you know, I miss that culture. I miss the people that are very passionate about it. And I like people that keep their culture alive too. Can we bring in her? Yeah, she's here and she's ready to talk. How is she? Better than when she was on the earth plane. Is she, she a true like... Native American or is she, is this a staged photo? These are all, by the way, from a museum gallery. So they're not AI photos. They're real people from history that we know nothing about. It, yeah, it's not a stage photo. She doesn't like the Earth plane at all. Is she an alien? No, no, but she doesn't like she doesn't like the suffering. She she likes being a free spirit. And she says, once I'm in a body, it's all over. All my freedom is gone. Is this because of her association with I think she was in the Lakota tribe? Yes, the tribes at, at the time, She listen, she's been in, a Native American in many, many lifetimes. And she says, our freedom was slowly eroded. And now she's like, I don't want to come back if I have to be, you know, somebody else other than a Native American. She liked the freedom of being on the land, of living how they wanted to live without government interference, um, you know, just being free, the simple, the simplistic life, the simple life. Um, she says now all those freedoms are gone. They've been stripped, stolen. Uh, so she's not happy with the earth plane. She does not like to come down here. When she does, though, she makes the very best of what she has. Now, she was somebody who would bandage up, uh, bandage up wounds. Uh, she was a bit of a medicine woman as well. But she says that always came very naturally to most of the women in the tribe. Um, she, you know, she just, she enjoys being who she wants without certificates and qualifications and education and schooling. Um, she says, oh, everything's been stolen. I like the way she's not looking at the camera, too. Did she, What was her opinion when this photo was taken? What was she thinking? She didn't want to look at the camera. She doesn't trust the white man. Did she have bad interactions with white men in her day? Very bad. So she saw her you know, fellow tribesmen become, you get murdered. You know, they were having to be compliant. They're like, why rules? Why do we need rules? We've existed for many, many, many generations without all these rules and, and people coming in and bossing us around, right? So yeah, very distrustful of whites. Can she tell us about her religious upbringing and what the land meant to her in a religious sense. So there was no organized religion, right? Of course, that was forced upon them, or at least they tried to force that uh, upon them, thinking that if we just convert everybody and we make them religious, they'll be more like us. She says, we didn't want to be like you. Look at the way you live. Um, she's telling me that the religion was basically having this faith and trust in nature and the universe and reliance upon ancestors, reliance upon the, the sky, the weather, everything was, was sort of nature related, um, believe signs and signals came from, you know, birds and animals and, and everything. 
uh, this this whole concept to her of an organized religion is is very bogus. Did she have other incarnations in other tribal areas outside of Native American in different parts of the world? Oh, that's a good question. Yes. So she says she's had other incarnations many, 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 many lifetimes ago, like around, you know, like Papua New Guinea, um, places like that. She says that most of the most of the natives migrated from sort of that area of the world i'm like well who were the first you know natives in the world and and she's saying that that was born out of the middle east now that's interesting to me because when i've done ctt past life sessions a lot of times i'll uncover past lives where people were in the middle east they were in the desert but I'm like, those, you know, a lot of those people evolved into, you know, modern day Europeans and and uh, those are the ones that conquered. So how how did you know, where was the breakaway from the natives? And she's telling me, like, just through millions and millions of you know years ago and, and thousands of years ago, just through natural migration, walking when the continents were all joined before there was this break apart, uh, they, they could walk wherever they could go. The land was all joined. Why stay in the earth reincarnation cycle if she feels that it's a trap? Because we're forced to. But she what? hasn't come back since this lifetime. She's very hesitant. She doesn't want to. But she knows eventually she'll be forced to if she if you refuse to do the reincarnation cycle, then you're of no use to source, right? You're of no use to because you're feeding energy back to source. We've already uncovered that in a few probes um, with Mr. Robot, like we're just like the battery pack where we give light back into source and if you refuse to participate in the reincarnation, eventually your soul will be incinerated. We're going to write to management about that as well. Does she feel that she can go to other lands or other planets, or is she not able to, did she not evolve that high? I mean, in the spirit world, there's a ball of energy like an orb. You're given permission to travel wherever you want to go. It's when you're confined when you're in the body. As long as you're respectful and you are, you know, naturally, because we all have this like God compass within us, right? So as long as our moral compass and we're not abusing that power and but we're able to extend ourselves and, and visit wherever we want to being in a body. She's like, is so restricting. <laughs> what does she do with her time or anti-time in a disconnected non-body over the last 175 of our years? Cause it's uncommon to find someone who hasn't incarnated in 20 or 30 years. What does she do with her evolution over there? She does a lot of reading or absorbing of information, um, getting ready to come down. She keeps putting them off like, no, I'm not ready yet. No, I'm not ready yet. Come back later. Come back later. Um, to come down in as like the ordinary American citizen um, or even Canadian. That That's really hard for her to you know, wrap her soul around that type of existence when she's known so many lifetimes of freedom. So that that's why she keeps delaying it. But she's she's learning like as much as she can about the benefits of being uh, a human incarnate, uh, modern incarnate, uh, what she might like to achieve in that lifetime. She really is anti tech as well. So that's that's another reason she's hesitating. She doesn't like it. And she doesn't like this whole, you know, 
forced to reincarnate either. Did she have any children in this past incarnation long ago? Yes, uh, four. And that was very difficult. Um, she was a good mother. She was kind of cold, though. She didn't want to be too, you know, cuddly and lovey because in that sort of existence that, you know, you've got to make sure that your, yes, your children are well provided for and taken care of, but also that they're not so clingy that they can't be independent and they can't survive. She's like modern American women. They, they love their children so much, but you know, they don't know how to survive. She says on the mean streets because they've never been taught how, how important those survival skills are. So her consciousness and mindset is very much still stuck in, in, you know, this tribal existence. And I understand what she's saying, you know, um, because life was, very difficult then you would have to fight against other tribes and you would have to hunt and you would have to grow and you'd have to be strong and you know she says so i i would show them love and show them that i care and obviously patch them up when they're injured but i didn't i didn't make them incapable of surviving what would be we be the most surprised about in the afterlife how easy it is up there. No challenges. No real, you know, day to day existing like how we have on the earth plane. We're just there. Where does she spend the majority of her information absorbing time in the afterlife? She likes to be on her own. She, uh, she does, she's very distrustful. Actually, when you look at her eyes and even in that photograph, she, she's very distrustful. She likes to be isolated. She doesn't want to depend upon anybody else for her existence. I mean, her children have come and, you know, obviously left the earth plane, come and gone, and they've recycled back down here many times to the point that they've left her on a conscious level behind and that's how she's further now separated from them as a soul family. So she, she's got a lot of catching up to do. What can she share with us as Earth Society in 2023 that she feels is the most important thing for people to focus on in their daily life? We abuse nature. We don't spend time in nature. We're very self-absorbed. We're consumed, you know, by objects and things around us. All of these things that we don't need, we can live without. And she wishes that she could reincarnate back into these more simpler times. And she's saying even the natives that live on reservations now have to either keep up with this level of existence or they're just basically they can't survive, you know, financially. And they don't. Often they don't. And that's just more government control, more mind control. So, you know, there really is this push-pull thing of I have to evolve and I have to accept the level where we are now of the, the modern day existence. And, but in her mind, doing that is giving up freedom. But if you don't, you lose all your freedom anyway. Now, if you reincarnate back on the reservation, because now you're just controlled by the government, she says, so you can't win either way. Well, I don't know. She has the right idea. I think to win the game, don't play. Yes, but if you don't play, you you are incinerated. That's it. Your soul is dissolved. We and, need to write management. This is a terrible plan. Yeah, but see, you know, we that's how it is. Like we've done so many probes of basically we were all once part of source, then we separate from source. That's very traumatic for us. 
And then we go through many, many, many reincarnations because ultimately we are part of source. Therefore, we have to serve source and we have to feed energy back to source by way of processing and enlightenment and consciousness expansion. And then, but see, if you ultimately, you know, the ultimate manifestation was the fact that you don't need anything and you get reabsorbed back into source. But once you're reabsorbed back into source, you lose all aspects of your character, your personality, your soul family. You just become part of source again. And, and all of this individualism is, is eliminated, right? It's dissolved. So, you know, at some level, you have to accept that things are the way that they are. And if you don't, then source says, oh, well, like, basically, this is a stray soul. It's not, it's taking up more energy than it's contributing back. So therefore, we have to like make it null and void and we'll make another one. So what the big question is, and I said to you before I hit the record button, is like, who is behind source? Like, who created this? And um, when I've tried to probe that a few times, it, you know, the answers are not very forthcoming. I think this is going to take a lot of digging around to find out who is behind all of this. Um, it would make more sense. But then I also find that the more I learn about this stuff and how it works, the more like unenthusiastic I become you know what I mean? like, do you see what I mean like it's kind of like you lose your enthusiasm wait this is all I'm doing then we'll that's probably princess. yeah that's probably why we have our memories erased and even on a soul level when you're in the spirit world you still don't have access to all of that information you're coming back down here and you're supposed to be excited and happy and you know, joyful. And this time you're actually going to conquer your challenges. You're going to evolve your soul. You're going to re, you know, re uh, join back into a different ascension level. So even those in the spirit world don't have this full understanding of what's going on. Now, when we look at her, she, you know, she's done with all that. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's like, even as you look at her eyes on the earth plane, she's like, yeah, this is kind of, you know, I'm over this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to play this game. So yeah, that's part of her challenge is to accept the game and to move through it and to want to be positive and, and, and experience that ascension. You didn't wow. know you were going to get all that from just another big one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lakota princess. Thank you so much, Liz. And thanks everybody for listening. We will see you next time. Yeah. See? See what happens when we pull up these old photographs? You never know.